this is the opponent process theory. Over time, when we take a drug, it gives us some kind of positive effect. Otherwise, we usually wouldn't use it. And anything which is a drug is something which affects one of hundreds of chemicals, such as neurotransmitters and hormones and all of these different kinds of things, some of you which you've heard of before, oxytocin, serotonin, adrenaline, things like this. So anything, it could be chocolate, it could be sugar, it could be nicotine, caffeine, alcohol. Anytime we take this drug, it affects the body. And for it to affect the body, it has to affect and be a drug, it has to affect some of these brain chemicals, which also affect the nerves throughout the body. We've got 100 billion of these brain cells and 120 billion nerve cells throughout the body. So you could say in a way that because these cells are so similar and operate with this, such similar chemicals to make them work, then the brain extends through the entire body. And what we think, if it becomes an excess, those moods and those chemicals become stronger in one sense or another, then if be set in those emotions set in to become a mood throughout the entire body they become symptomatic through the entire body and these drugs affect the entire body such as if i have too much sugar then a little while afterwards i'll have a slump and that's what the opponent process is about is that the body says hey these chemicals are out of balance because this drug has come in here so now i have this drug going whoa and uh, the, the body's making these opposite chemicals it seems to try and account for that and uh, it can only be that if that's an opposite chemical, really, it's probably having mostly the opposite effect to try and balance it out. So how does that actually look for us in the real world? How do we experience this as this actual effect, the actual experienced effect that comes in in the opponent process theory is that at the beginning, we have a bit of a spike. So it might be uh, you see the first time someone has a strong medication that they're given or alcohol, they become quite strongly affected by it for the first time until their body catches up and it gets better at making this opponent process as time goes on. Then we level out a bit. It might be a few weeks after we start taking a medication that our body learns to cope and balance out evenly. So we come to this even keel where you're just above the level there. And uh, then things will always come to the point where the liver or something else in the body processes that chemical and the drug goes out of our body. At that point, the opponent process is still there. So this is medically what they call a withdrawal effect or a hangover. I know that in a lot of places people will say, oh, I don't get a hangover, I'm fine the next day or a couple of hours later or whatever else that is, depending on what it is they've had, or you know, I never ever get effects. Well, there's always going to be some kind of opposite effect. If we take a chemical which makes us really happy and elated, then that opposite effect might be a really mild, subdued version of not feeling like going outside, preferring to watch a movie, not as talkative, wearing sunglasses. If we do go outside, making it for a short time, not doing anything really noisy or excessive like mowing the lawn. This is technically a withdrawal. Uh, if we're talking about withdrawals that are um, more socially talked about in terms of uh, feeling really ill, then that's really to the, often to the level of poisoning, and that's a whole other meta matter. But um, this understanding of how withdrawals occurs is really important in terms of us being able to say, well, if I have any chemical to excess, it's going to send me up and down this roller coaster to the point where I'll also have to come down from that. I'll also have to find a way to deal with that. So do we want to put too much in? Do we want to manage that better? Those are the questions that are posed by this theory and uh, by having a better understanding of the half-lifes and talking to our pharmacists and doctors, we can figure out what's going to work for us and what we need to do to make sure that we can stay at a more even keel. Hopefully we all want naturally and have uh, a helpful experience, not a negative one. Thank you.